look up the technical definition of pagan. It's just a person who doesn't follow the current modern world religion. Mm, That's interesting. It. It's a huge blanket term. Huge. So the thing is, if, if, if you don't find yourself um, subscribing to the identity of those belief systems, you are technically, by definition, pagan. Here's a little bit of context for today's podcast. I got a chance to talk to David Christensen all about Vikings. We talked about Norse paganism, paganism, and what it is in general, and so much more. The nature of reality, extraterrestrials. We talked about a lot of different things. Now, if you don't know a lot about paganism in general, this is actually going to be a quite interesting podcast because it was vastly different than I had perceived it before. So without further ado, here's David. Let's talk about Yule. Yeah, let's talk Yule. about Christmas. Let's talk about what the origins are of that, because I know you've studied so many different things, and I'm mm -hmm. just really curious as to your take on it, you know? Totally. Yeah. So it's it's cool because I love Christmas. I love the holiday. I love the time. I love how everybody's all holly and jolly and everybody goes and to be around family. And, you know, the whole idea behind it is wonderful. Um, I, I do like to dive deeper, though, as to why they exist, why people even have this holiday. And um, <clears throat> up until I was 23, I never even thought about looking deep. You know, so that was about, what, three years ago now? Wow. And um, I'm very excited to say that Yule is where Christmas actually originated from. And I'm not taking from, I'm not trying to take any of the power from Christmas because, you know, hey, it's powerful for you, own it. You know, that's cool. Yeah. But Yule is where it all started, which is the celebration of the winter solstice, you know, kind of when the sun is starting to um, kind of revolve back around. You know, it's kind of a celebration in hopes that the sun comes back. You know, so it's a, it's a primal style celebration, but uh, it turned into Christmas at the time of conversion for the Scandinavian peoples. So when they were trying to convert the Scandinavians to Christianity or what it was at the time, Ooh, almost put my water. Um, <laughs> they actually said, "Hey, you're actually celebrating the birth of Jesus. You know, let's 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 help you incorporate your holidays into this new belief system, so it's an easier conversion for you." And um, as kind as that is, it kind of started to strip away a lot of the reasons for the traditions. You know, and and a lot of it in Yule is intention setting. You know, kind of to help manifest the new, like uh, the coming of the new year or the returning of the sun, you know. And uh, <clears throat> a lot of people started to just kind of turn it into a, I guess you'd say, a money laundering holiday. <laughs> How can we make as much money today as possible? You know, and it's like, yeah. um, but the tradition behind it is so much deeper because at least in, in the pagan belief system, um, there's, there's a, uh, emerge with our energies and the universe and there's different times of the year and different uh, times for us in the year you know times for giving and times for gratitude times for manifestation times for work you know it's 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 all a cycle you know and, and based off the other podcasts i've seen that you've done like you're totally down for that idea which is really cool yeah, we're just exploring. We're just trying to understand what could be, you know? And mm -hmm. so when we think about paganism, I know there's going to be a lot of people that are like, okay, I've, I might have heard that word sometime yes. in my life, but I don't actually know what that means. And, you know, that was me for most of my life. And that's fine. Mm -hmm. Like, that's not yep. a problem. But I think it would be good to kind of rewind and talk about what the differences between paganism and maybe other different ways of interpreting reality are. Yeah, so uh, that's really cool that you asked that because the word pagan held me back for a long time. Um, because if you if you look up the technical definition of pagan, it's just a person who doesn't follow the current modern world religions. Mm, that's interesting. It. It's a huge blanket term, huge. So the thing is, if 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 you don't find yourself um, subscribing to the identity of those belief systems, you are technically, by definition, pagan. Technically. You don't have to own that identity, but it, mm. that's, you know? And uh, I take on that identity personally because a lot of people have a lot of stigma against it. And 
I take that as an opportunity to help people learn. So technically, I'm pagan. Technically, you're pagan. Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And if you're a truth seeker, which is what I call it, but I mean, there's different names for everything. Somebody who dives into a ton of different belief systems to find what works for them, you would technically be eclectic, which means that you don't subscribe to one, but you, you, you absorb many. You know? mm. So you'd be an eclectic pagan, which is the identity I subscribe to uh, for identification reasons. Okay, so yeah. in paganism, is there... So when you say basically, <laughs> let me just run this back just to make sure I'm, my brain is getting this. So yeah, yeah, yeah. basically paganism is when you don't believe in a specific system of, or is that more towards like the mainstream beliefs or maybe the more popular? Or is Yeah, it, so the, the mainstream yeah. world religions. No, yeah, okay. you were totally, you were right on. Yeah, you were right on. But okay. it's the mainstream world religions. So I guess the biggest and easiest example would be like, if you don't classify yourself as Christian, a Christian would call you pagan. You wow. Know? Okay. For some yeah. reason, I thought pagan was <laughs> like nothing like that. And maybe that's just my own ignorance. S you know? Same here. That's the thing is I completely thought the same thing. And that's why I, I fought the word for so long. And I usually used to think that paganism was like, and I grew up Christian, so I, I had this ideology behind it, but it's like, I thought it was literally like Satan. Like, oh man, that's the devil. Anything pagan is the devil, which means in Christianity, which means anything not Christian. And that wild, isn't that wild to just think about <laughs> that anything that's not a part of your system is the, the devil or complete evil. I mean, just think about yeah. that because what are cults made of? what that sounds yeah. real culty I'm, I'm i'm just saying it i'm not ragging on anything in terms of you know believe what you want but it's just yeah, like yeah. you got to take a step back and think about that like, like if you if the way that you look at the world is like anything else outside of that is considered evil without ever you know cognitively intellectually just even considering it that's kind mm -hmm. of a scary place to be in because that's how you get uh, manipulated, I feel like, and we've seen that with many different cult leaders, you know? Yes, and 100%. Uh, the, the funny thing is, too, is I always tell people this. I say, if what you believe is so true, then it will stand up to question. Facts. It will. It'll stand up to it. So the thing is, like, if you, if you are refusing to, to even acknowledge other belief systems or other ways of thinking, because of the fact that you just believe it's the devil. Now, now you're turning down uh, questions, you know, and, and, and the, the, the question I always have, it, whenever I'd ask questions, they just say, have faith. And it's like, it's faith is a part of life. But the thing is that doesn't answer my question, you know? And, mm -hmm. and a lot of times, at least in my pagan path, again, for just using the blanket term, I found a lot of things that, you know, and I don't know if you have this feeling, but in Christianity, I've always wanted to feel truth. And the thing is, like, I always felt like I was reaching for something, you know, and then when I you dived into, yeah, I have no, like, no clue. You know, I always felt like it was just too far away. And then um, I don't know if you've ever read the book, The Untethered Soul by Michael A. Singer. Mm -hmm. First chapter opened my eyes, literally. <laughs> so um, after reading that book personally that was my definitive moment where i switched literally it was a i was digging a hole in my old job i used to dig pools uh for a contractor a labor worker and literally i, I can tell you i almost fell down when i when i listened to the first chapter of that book it changed my entire life and from then i've been living my dream life you know i always recommend the book but anyways <clears throat> going down that road just really showed me that what the feeling of truth can feel like you know that's kind of where i was going with that the so feeling what of does truth it, what does it feel you. like to you um so for lack of a better term a lot of people have stigma on this line right here but i'm going to say it because it means it, it feels like it to me it's kind of like the wake up you know the first time you open your eyes after being asleep for so long that's that's the feeling I had 
to where it's almost like the world looked different. It feels different now. Everything I thought I knew is just gone. And it's like, wow, you can't question that feeling because you feel like you know it. You know, if that makes sense, if that makes sense. Yeah. So continuing on with that thought, what do you think that the definition of truth is? Mm. You know, if I'm being 100% honest, I haven't thought into that too hard. Mm-hmm. So I don't know if I could give a definitive answer. Um, okay. Because there's people that believe that you have your own truth, and then there's people that believe there's the truth, and then there's your own truth. You know? And it's, it's just a thought process I haven't dove deep into yet. I got you. Because it's like, yeah. what are we feeling when we say we're feeling truth? To me, yeah. it's like this process of closer to unity. I like the way that uh, for, mm. for today, let's talk about Dr. David Hawkins and his work with the levels of consciousness. Mm-hmm. He, he defined truth as life giving <clears throat> and falsehood as life taking. And I like that. And so when we think about truth, then in the end, we've got to maybe play around with this thought process of what is morality and ethics and how does that have to do with truth? Um, Because if truth in itself is just life giving, where's the place for the Batman? (laughs) Right. I like that. I like that. I like that. Yeah. Sometimes, you know, we have to think about progression of society and also truth. And where do, like, I think it's good for this conversation to talk about the different belief systems in that, you know, what is true? Yes. Uh, because a lot of times when people think what is truth, it's what is correct. And I think that also can apply to it. But when we think about correctness, when I'm saying truth in, in the context of Dr. Hawkins, it's more, it's more based on the emotions, uh, yes. the truth and emotions. And if it's life giving, then it's truth. If it's life taking, then it's not. But when we talk about overall truth, then we're talking about, I, in my kind of contemplations, cause you know, in all these podcasts, so many times the concept of truth is something that absolutely is a staple. And I've heard a lot of different perspectives on it. And I think it's also interesting to think about, well, for me, having like you, I was in Christianity. Yeah. And left that and uh, just started to explore what could be and all these different systems from Buddhism to Hinduism and uh, yeah. now paganism. Let's go. But in paganism, <laughs> yeah, right, right. but paganism really isn't even <laughs> it's not a really system. a thing. It's yeah. a blanket. Yeah, it's a blanket. It's so interesting <laughs> to think about. So, but to finish up my thought on that, I think. We could have truth, like in the sense of, like, if we think about the afterlife, what is actually going to happen? I can say from my own subjective experience that it's not going to be something where I am burning. I can tell you that's something that I've subjectively come to the truth, and I think we can come to that through a an experience of truth, which we're, we're bringing it all the way back to the beginning. Yeah. The experience oh, of truth <laughs> can be like a transcendental moment where you experience yes. kind of this bliss consciousness that's been talked about in many different uh, cultures. When they like a very it. comfortable slap in the face. <laughs> if <that's>, <laughs> if it, I mean, sure, you could call it that if that's how it it is for you. Yeah, yeah, that's how it felt for me. I was just like, whoa, <laughs> it rocked my world, man. It was crazy. But also, I did want to go off before we we stray too far away from uh, the subject is the topic of hell. Um, Coming from the Christian background, I'm sure you had to deal with this too. It took me a while to get over the fear of hell. Did you have that same feeling? Yeah, I think that's one of the most difficult things about leaving Christianity is because you have... Those are the consequences, according to them. Yes. And, you know, the way that I kind of came to the conclusion, and and then I want to hear your thoughts for sure on this, Mm -hmm. but I came to the conclusion very simply that uh, with all my research on the game that we're playing, universe game, right? Mm 
Yeah, yeah, love it. We it wouldn't make sense to me to have a god that puts you in the game with no guidance and hope that you maybe find the rules. And if you don't find the rules, that's it. And yeah. we got the rules 100% right over 3,000 years or 2,000 years or, you know, 2, or whatever. whatever. Yeah. Yeah. That's my thoughts. No, I, I love it because that's one of the things that really clicked for me too, is the, the thing that <laughs> when you kind of dive into the mindset of like, you know, there's also the word spirituality, you know, as a spirit, we are eternal. So we're really judged eternally on a blip of existence in one life. That doesn't make sense. Like that, that makes no sense. It, because if you, if you think about it, that's a very human thought. Like me judging you. Why, why would an all powerful, and again, I do believe there's a source of energy, you know, you can call it God if you want, but the way it's taught in the Christian path, and again, no hate towards them. If you guys are Christian listening to this, you know, much love to you. And again, follow your path. But in, in the Christian belief system, it's, it's very much, if you look at the states of consciousness, uh, which you talk about all the time on your TikTok, love it. Uh, the, the fear, and then you have like guilt, and then I, I love it. Yeah, I have guilt, that same. Yeah. yeah, I still have, the, I have that chart too. But um, if you think about it, God starts out wrathful. You know, he starts out very punishing and then he develops into a loving being. And you can almost watch through the Bible in the state of consciousness that he is elevating as God, you know? And, and the thing is, like, those are very human depictions of what God is based off consciousness of that time, you know? And that looking at that from that perspective really changes the way I viewed the Bible because I do love the lessons in the Bible. It's just, there's a lot of human aspects added to it. You can feel the truth in the Bible when you come from it with a different perspective, but a lot of it is human perspective and you can see the evolution of consciousness in the Bible based off how they talk about God. And it's, it's very interesting, you know, but, but that kind of helped me step away from, I feel like hell was almost put there to make you fear not being Christian. You know, and it's like, what's the best way to get people to conform? Fear, you know, and I just, at one point in my life, I just decided to stop fearing, you know. Was that a moment? It was a moment of acceptance for me. I, I learned what meditation was, and I started meditating a lot on my fears. And what do they always say? It's like, you know everything you've ever wanted is on the other side of fear. So I just had to truly sit down with myself and face that fear and ask myself why I even feared that, you know? And it, it kind of brought me down a, a series of thoughts that led me to the acceptance of not fearing hell. Today's podcast is sponsored by my book, 10 Secrets of Awakening. This book was designed to link consciousness, self-realization, and life transformation. If you're interested in those topics and learning more about the nature of this reality, check out 10 Secrets of Awakening on Amazon as an ebook or as a paperback. Yeah, I think this is really bringing me back to a conversation I had with Flynn Skidmore is his name. Um, we mm -hmm. did a three-hour conversation in California together, and I remember towards the end, I don't know how many people are actually going to see this, so I want to bring it up again. As in, like, yeah. how many people have saw that? Because it was, like, towards the end of three hours. So I'm like, I just know, <laughs> you know, people are going to drop off at that point sometimes. And yeah. sometimes they're not. You know, it depends. I actually mm -hmm. tend to listen. I feel like the longer the podcast, the more people just kind of let go and just start being themselves. That's why I like doing them, you know, I for in-person ones, I usually go longer because, you know, it's, it's more cohesive in person and all that. Oh, That's course. what I find. And, and, you yeah. know, just any conversation with anyone in person is usually better anyways, you know? Yep. So, um, yep. but when I was talking to Flynn, he was talking to me about Jordan Peterson and we did like a psychological breakdown of Jordan sure. Peterson and yeah. we were talking about the Bible and, and these same concepts. And he, he brought up a good point to me. He's like, when I look at beliefs, I look at what is the utility or value of the belief and 
what is the experience that the person is having that they believe? Or what is the experience mm. that the person is having that that believes that? What is, what experience is that giving them to believe that? Like, is it an, mm. is it an experience of like happiness? Is it joy? Is it an experience of peace? And, and he started talking to me about how Jordan Peterson doesn't look like he's having fun. <laughs> he's <laughs> almost like, always crying, right? And I'm like, it's like, that's a that's interesting to think about. It's like mm-hmm. he believes in his mind and. You it, from your reaction, it looks like you know Jordan Peterson, or you've heard of him. You know, yeah. watch him. So it's like we don't want to be because there's two roads here to me, two major roads. It's like maybe he's right, and he's and this is psychologically what he's thinking. And in, in my reflection of him, mm-hmm. he's looking at the world, and he's looking at the Bible, and he sees that as truth, even though it's somber or it's sad, or it's fearful, he think, he really believes that it's right, so then, therefore, he's going to relay that because, in his mind, he's like, well, I have a duty, if it's the truth. And yep. so, I think that a lot of the times when you have people that are in that space, I've found that they have not actually explored. Maybe he has, but I, I from my, I've watched a decent amount of his stuff, and I've never heard him talk about any other ways of looking at the world and and this type of thing. And so, I think it's we don't want to ignore it, something that's a harsh truth, because then we live in ignorance, and then maybe it would still happen. But I think if yeah. we come to this to the conclusion as you have, and I have after studying many different traditions, you know, I saw you were at a Buddhist temple, and yeah, yeah. Uh, that was great. <laughs> Right. And so I want to talk about that. But to finish up on that thought, it's like we have come to the conclusion after having an experience with many things. And if we can look at everything and say, you know what, this is the truth, then I respect it. If Jordan Peterson has looked at everything and be like, okay, this is what I believe it is. Okay, fair enough. But it's the problem I have is sometimes when people just are raised in a system and they haven't looked at Mm -hmm. other places because if you were born in india man hinduism you're gonna really really yep. that's gonna be your thing it's gonna be really to dependent be on where you are you know yeah yeah that's so. that's very true that's very true and admittedly um jordan peterson in the influence he's had in my life has been clips on TikTok. being 100 percent honest so when his clips come up usually it's snippets of like his powerful statements And um, I have seen some things I agree with, but I also did see recently that he he is very biblically inclined. (laughs) Wrong word. He's got a lot of religious (laughs) fundamentalism in there. Yes, yes, yes. I have been seeing that a lot recently as well. And he does feel that duty to do this. He fears not doing it. You know, so is he acting out of fear? Because if so, we based off levels of consciousness and and that whole view we have on things, what message is he really putting out there? You know, and I haven't thought about it like that until you just explained it, which is really, I appreciate that because I'm going to come, I'm going to come across it in a, in a different light. Yeah. You so. just, you just kind of see how it feels when you're watching him. You know, Dr. Hawkins work, we're talking about levels. He, mm-hmm. the, the basic premise is that the calibrations are based on, the your body's ability your body's ability this is important to this concept it's not just like oh he thought maybe this was these are the levels he calibrated it using this is what he says i'm not saying this is completely you know absolute truth but this is the system that i've really resonated with for many years yeah you you calibrate it based on your body's ability to stay strong in the presence of truth like you hold your arm out and it's called kinesiology muscle testing so yep. that's how he kind of calibrated the levels. And so when we're talking about fear, your body goes weak in the presence of it. So it's, that's because it's below 200 on the levels. So if you're watching someone like, uh, let's say, Jordan Peterson, for example, you might have a lot of statements that are in fear because that's what a lot of religious fundamentalism is. It's in fear. Yes. And yep. also in the Bible, it does say fear is the beginning of wisdom. Or the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom or something very, Mm -hmm. very similar. It's along those lines. Yeah. And so that can be helpful to, again, to to kind of boost up the Bible. You know, there is, 
some benefit to that, somebody who doesn't have any morals. You know, if someone is completely mm. morally bankrupt and they're in shame and they just are often people, if they have fear that they might burn for doing that, that can be helpful. Yeah, you at know? least they're raising it a little bit, you know? It's, exactly. And, exactly. And I heard somebody say the, the best way, and again, if anybody's listening to this in a depressed state, um, a lot of times to help yourself get out of that level is to get angry. You know, because at least it's a movement up, you know, and it can guide you towards those higher level thinking, you know, and it's, um, and sometimes just get pissed. What? Oh man, dude, I think of myself this way. I'm pissed off about that. What the heck? You know, get mad. And at least you're raising your vibration. And that's just one, that's just taking the first step because everybody thinks like, oh, I need to go from here to here. And it's like, that would be great. That'd be awesome. But Steps are way more attainable. You know? Yeah, you're like pissed, you're depressed. You're like, I deserve better than to be depressed. And you get pissed Bam. off about that, you know? And it can yep. be extremely helpful because if you're <laughs> just feeling sorry for yourself, it's like, well, what is a utility or value in that for you? It's yeah. like, what is that going to get you? What is the experience of perceiving life that way benefiting you in some way? Because exactly. it doesn't seem like it is because there's no mm -hmm. value in that. And if you are to take the other perspective of, you know what, I'm pissed because I deserve better because I know that I am worthy of more than this. And I know that mm -hmm. I am yes. uh, capable of creating the life that I prefer, let's say, for example. Then if you're angry about it, that's going to be the level where you start to take action because anger has enough energy to take action. When you're in shame or guilt, you literally don't have any energy because it's at the bottom of the levels according to dr hawkins you know so yep. getting angry i 100 percent am with you on that yeah and, and really quick it, uh, a thought sparked in my head when you said uh, when you were started speaking those i am affirmations and, and and the cool thing is what i like to say out here is especially coming from a, a bible background a lot of people forget about the time when moses was or it was moses talking to the burning bush you know, he said, I am that I am. People are curious, what does that mean? Well, when you say I am, what does that mean? I am, why is that powerful? And the, the, the person he was speaking to was I am. So that statement right there is the power of the Godhead, whatever you want to call that source. You know, so it's, it's really cool. When you say I am, you're instilling the power of source. You know, and, and a, you could really take that power from the Christian perspective, you know, speak with I am, because even if you're Christian, you believe that, you know, and it's like, you don't have to believe the way I do, but even, you know, God said in the Bible, I am that I am. So when you say I am, you are, you are creating the power of God, you know, and I, I like to instill that. Remember, <laughs> I am is literally the most powerful statement you could probably say. You know, but what comes after that genuinely affects you. So be very picky, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I am. Yeah. <laughs> Think about that concept in the context of what really are we? You know? Yeah. Isn't that great? Why do all of us call ourselves I? You ever think about that? I thought about that. <laughs> I still think about that. <laughs> Why are we all referring as I, A? What, this must mean something. Maybe, yeah, we separate ourselves. Maybe yeah. we all are the same I. And it's interesting because you're saying the Godhead. And I think that's an interesting word. Because mm -hmm. Godhead, it's an interesting to think about, well, maybe there's a head <laughs> of God. Or yeah. there's different faces of God. That's what they say the Brahmin is in um, mm -hmm. Eastern yeah. tradition. The different faces of God. Maybe we're yeah. all just a different face of that same creator. Made in his image, right? <laughs> yeah, what do you think about his? What do you think about that wording? Uh, I think it's a projection. Um if, if, if at that time you need that entity to feel masculine, you'll create that, you know? And, and a lot of times, uh, at least in history, masculine figures were thought of as leaders, 
you know, like back then, I'm not speaking now, but back then, that's just the way it was. You know, you said his because people added power to masculine, you know, but we're definitely moving into a world where divine feminine and divine masculine are, are, are finding their power. And um, with that said, in those days, masculine was the power figure. So when you think of a god in those days, they assumed masculine. That's that's my view on it. You know, I, I can't say that's fully true because you know I'd, I'd definitely have to do more research on it. But based off what I've read and who people I've talked to, that's kind of the idea I get from his and her or it or the whatever you want to call the source. Yeah. So with bringing the Viking in, yeah. how does that kind of roll with? paganism and mm-hmm. how do you feel like uh you being someone who i guess you could say identifies as i don't know you you're you're bringing the viking traditions alive in some sense and so yeah. what kind of what's that experience like with having the paganism together in that and even if if maybe that question is a little vague Maybe if you want to mm-hmm. go for, how is it with vi- the Viking and paganism compared to history? Like, were Vikings pagan, or how did that work? You know what I'm saying? So, so that's that is an awesome question. Uh, I thank you for asking that because the 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 Viking image and identity that I that I have created is is solely built for those who find power in it. Um, so when you think about the word Viking, you know, a lot of people, not everybody, but a lot of people think strong, powerful, uh, the women of the time were very ahead of their time. They were actually equals to, and they actually had a lot more power than a lot of men did. Um, so it's like in that time, they were just very, I guess you'd say dominant creatures for lack of better term. (laughs) So a lot of people have that thought of Vikings like powerful, strong, competent, yeah. you know, and, and if you find that power in a word, I want you to own it because the thing is we give power to words, go to another country and let them talk to you. Those words mean nothing to you unless you give them meaning. So if people have given Viking this powerful meaning or the Norse gods, this powerful image, um, I, I fully believe that to move yourself forward, you should own that strength. You know, uh, a lot of people are trying to be a thing. A lot of people are trying to be. They're trying to be. And one thing I've been studying myself recently is being instead of trying. You know, because a lot of us are reaching for something. But the more you, I guess, the more you resist, the more it persists. So the thing is, the more you reach, the more it pushes itself away. So instead, accept. And and the reason I take on the Viking identity is um, kind of to guide those people who need to find power in it. You know, there's a, excuse me, there's a lot of um, attacks. And again, I'm not talking about a whole, this is the experience I've seen on my end. It could be different for other people, but I've been seeing a lot of attacks on masculinity. Um, and, And again, I think it needs to be attacked in a way so that it can find its balance. But It's, there's a lot of people who take it and become victims and owning the victim identity is way worse than owning the Viking identity. You know, again, it's, it's the way I quote it is because the technical definition, you can't be one, you know, and I know that people hate me for it, but I'm not there for them. I'm there for the people who find the power in it. And, and my goal is to guide them towards, towards moving forward in their and their development of their human experience. And if they find it in the Viking realm, I'll be the face that takes all the criticism. Because I can. I can. I know I can. But there's people out there who can't. So the thing is, if if they're getting criticized, they're like, hey, but look at this person. He's doing it. And me with my platform, I I realize I'm an influence. And it took me a while to realize that because I was trying to. But now owning the identity that I am an influence. People are influenced by me. So I need to be sure that I know what I'm doing. You know, and I'm willing to take the the front road and get smacked 
if needed, so that you can find the power in the word Viking. And when it comes to the Norse gods, going into that realm, you know, very quickly is I'm not, it's technically called and not technically called Norse pagan. It's Norwegian paganism, you know, or Norse or Scandinavian paganism. Um, it's the belief in the old gods. And I, I would consider myself polytheistic because I believe what you give power to exists. So if those gods are real to you, they will be real to you because you've created them. So a lot of people have given these Norse gods, like Loki, for example, the, the embodiment of mischief, the embodiment of resilience, the embodiment of rebellion. Thor, the embodiment of power, the embodiment of strength, the embodiment of masculinity. Odin, the embodiment of wisdom, but also the embodiment of wise ignorance. Now, people don't get that. Odin's entire thing, the reason he wants to know everything is because he's trying to prevent his death. The reason Valhalla exists is because he's creating an army of people to defend him when Ragnarok comes, when he's supposed to die. You know, that kind of sounds very selfish. So the thing is, these are very human depictions of gods. They're, they're identifying themselves with these beings or entities or gods or whatever you want to call them so that they can find power in them. And who am I to tell you you're wrong? <laughs> so, it's when working for you, let me guide you through it, at least in a way that works for you. And it's my heritage. So, the thing is, I do feel like I'm kind of like pleasing my ancestors by, by owning this side of my life, you know? Because my family has become Americanized, um, not a super negative way. We own a lot of the same virtues and morals, but um, I would love to bring my family back to its roots. And that's kind of why I chose the Viking or Norse pagan or, you know, any of that type of community and culture. And I'm using it in a way to help lead people to their inner power. You know? hmm. Okay. Very interesting. Yeah. So with, Norse paganism, you said that it was yeah. with the old, it's belief in the old gods. Old gods, that's what they say, yeah. So, who are the old gods? So, there's tons of them, but we got Odin, Thor, Loki for the most popular. We got Fey, we got Freya, we got um, Sif, we have uh, Magni, Modi, which are the sons of Thor, we have Vili, which is a, another son that nobody talks about who trains his whole life for war. Um, we have, uh, there's, there's so many, it could just keep going. Yeah, you don't got to keep but, going, um, it's fine. Um, yeah. I get, I get but the But those idea. are the gods. Yeah. So, and they all embody a specific like personality, you know? Yeah, so when you're thinking about the old gods and if you have a belief in the old gods, when you say belief in the old gods, does that mean you worship them? Great question. Um, it's very different for a lot of people. Uh, I've noticed as I've been in this community, um, which I even have like a huge discord called House Vikinger. Of, it's a pagan hub where people come together and meet other people. Um, it has six, like 6,500 people in there who find each other just to talk and like wow. get different perspectives from around the world. So the thing is in, in Norway alone, I, I have tons of friends in Norway who support me. And then I have haters in Norway who think that I'm doing the dumbest thing in the world. So be it, you know, there's going to be a little bit of everything, but, um, have you ever just lost it? Sorry. Repeat one more time. Oh, you're good. If you could, I lost, the, I lost the, my train of thought. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That happens all the time. No worries. <laughs> I'm so um, sorry. <laughs> we were talking about, um, Oh no, I lost it too. <laughs> <laughs> Something about the old gods. Um, oh, oh, worship. worship do, I, yep. do we worship them? So, wow, that was intense. Okay. <laughs> I'm glad we caught it. Yeah. But uh, when, it, when it comes to worshiping the old gods, uh, some people believe that you need to be on top of the worship. Uh, other people believe that those gods don't care if you worship them. And I kind of like that side better. Because the side where they don't care if you worship them, 
uh, because they don't give you power. That, that's the thing. They don't give you power. They, they inspire. You know, and, and there's people who are like, when you ask for power from an outside source, I believe you are limiting yourself of your own power because you are the powerful being. So when you're like, hey, Thor, inspire the strength within me to handle this trial in my life. And then you'd make an offering, which in my opinion, some people believe the offering does the power. I believe the intention does the power. So it's like, if you make this offering, that is you physically in the real world, putting your intention into a thing you are doing for that to happen. Almost like a form of physical manifestation, you know? Kind of like the uh, placebo effect. Kind of. Yeah. Yeah. Some people won't like that I said that, but it's very true. Yeah. I'm just asking, you know, so. No, you're very right. No, you're very right because some people find more power in the in the doing, while some people find more power in 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 here. You know, it's like, oh, you can do it all here. You don't need to project it into the world. You know, because if you think about it, that's all spells are. They're intentions and words. And if you put them together and you believe enough, or you you put that power into it, that spell could work for you. You know, it's like a form of manifestation. You know, and. It's, it's just really cool to see how different people practice because in this Norse paganism, again, for lack of a better word, because I know people call it different things all over the place, there is no one finite way of doing it. And that's where the argument comes from, is everybody thinks it's like, and again, I use Christianity as an example because I grew up in it. It's not because I'm trying to attack. So anybody who's Christian, it's fine. I'm not trying to attack you. But in the Christian belief system, we believe this is the one way, you know, this is it. And if anything, if there's anything else, you're wrong, you know, and in paganism, it's very different. You know, a lot of people bring that Christian mindset into the pagan belief system. I'm doing it this way. So you must be wrong. No, but in the pagan belief system, it's everybody's finding their own way. And the only way that resonates with them, the only way that finds power. You know, that's kind of when it comes to worship, it's really up to you. You know, if you want to worship, go ahead. You know, if you find power, try it. I always say, try it before you're like, oh, that doesn't work. Maybe it works for you. You know? So, yeah, that's my take. Yeah. (laughs) So, I'm just going to jump off the deep end here and ask you if the, you ever thought about how maybe the old gods, of Norse paganism could have been extraterrestrials. I'm just curious. Have you ever thought about it? <laughs> yes. Oh, I've thought about it a lot. <laughs> I think every God made up in every religion could have been them coming here to help excel us. You know, like, Oh, they lived hundreds of years. Yeah. But to them, that's a blip. And, and then suddenly they're gone. Weird. Like, you know, right. Huh. Oh. <laughs> You know, there's depictions of them being superhuman or having an Egyptian in Egypt, heads of different animals, you know, or being giants, you know, and it's like, if I were a primal being at that time, thousands of years ago, and I had no idea what to believe, and I saw this giant in front of me, that's a God. Just being honest, that's a God. How long has he been alive? A couple hundred years? God. Oh, he's got, he's got brothers and sisters. Those are gods. Totally, totally possible. I believe in extraterrestrials. I, I fully believe it. <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> <laughs> are you on that? You're in that whole world too? I just feel like it's, it makes sense. I feel like uh, if you have beings, like you said, who come down and, and they're, maybe they come in their spaceships. Maybe they just come here by the power of thought. They manifest themselves. Who knows? But it's kind of weird how we live in the most boring time ever. What's going on with that? (laughs) Come on, guys. Let's go. Right. I feel like (laughs) all the cool shit happened and where is it? You know what I'm saying? Like the whole book of Enoch. You know, have you read that? Yeah. Yeah. Just like, oh, man, he was brought up in a fiery chariot. Oh, so he was abducted. Okay. (laughs) I gotcha. I gotcha. Because you don't know what a beam of light is back in those days. You would just think it's a fiery beam of light, a fiery swirl. So if you want to go into that a little bit more for people that don't know. Sure. Totally. No. So the the thing is in the Bible, like the book that is still in the Bible, 
Enoch never died, technically. So if you read the Bible as it is today, as it's printed, New Testament or the uh, King James Version, whatever version you want, Enoch is in there. And he was taking it, taken up in a chariot of fire to the, to the heavens. And if you think about it from a point of view of somebody who's writing that, and they see somebody get, like, just imagine, you don't know what a beam of light is. You don't, you don't know what that thing is in the sky. It's just a bright light. You have no concept of understanding what that is. Zero. Cars don't even exist. You know, wheels are still like the coolest invention in the world. So it's like, you'd be like, what is that? It's a fiery pillar of light taking him and then it's gone and he's gone. He must have been taken to heaven. You know, and and for those of you who haven't read the book of Enoch, definitely dive into that. (laughs) It's big. But like, just from that perspective alone, should instill that little excitement of, hmm, just question it. Think about it. Like that is very interesting, <laughs> you know, and that's, I feel like that's a good introduction to it, you know? Yeah. But what about you? What's your whole view on that thing, on, on the whole Enoch uh, perspective? Have you gone down that road? Yeah, man. I feel like it's a spaceship dude was. <laughs> cool. You're like, I'm right there. I'm right there with you. Yep. Yeah. Spaceship. It's, it's just like. If you're you're you describe that so perfectly, because if you're just a a guy who's never seen anything, never seen airplanes, you've never seen, uh, you know, anything flying in the sky. And it's like, okay, well, chariot of fire. Hey, sounds about Mm -hmm. right. Probably, Um, you know, if things were to disappear and you never saw them again, you would think anything that has to do with that would be heaven, you know, no matter where it went. Yeah, that's your only concept. (laughs) Exactly. Yeah. And I was watching, you know, Gaia. I know you know mm-hmm. Gaia. Okay. So I was watching Gaia the other day and it, uh, what the bleep do we know? Have you seen that? I have. Yeah. So they're talking about when, when the, uh, when Columbus was coming over and the Indians didn't even see their ships. They, because they had no concept of what those giant ships would even be. So mo- a majority of people wouldn't even be able to conceptualize a, a, a sh- uh, like a, a migration ship because they've never even thought of anything like that. So in the horizon, if you saw ships coming, you almost wouldn't even be able to perceive them. Your brain has nothing to go off of, no labels for it. So they're almost invisible to the point where you're just like, ah, I almost don't see anything there. So a lot of the times people are like, well, they didn't even see the ships coming. You know, maybe a shaman did, but he had to wake up everybody first so that they could see what they didn't see because they can't conceptualize it. Kind of like the way, you know, when you you dive into this path, the world changes. You see things you've never seen before. You notice things you didn't even know were there. And you're like, whoa, this has been here the whole time. You know, all you had to do is just, you needed the concept first. And it's same with the ship. You know, in the in the book, book of Enoch, you know, the ship, you can't conceptualize what that is in that time period. It's impossible. I mean, I feel like that might be the reason why we don't see UFOs is because maybe they look nothing like we think they do. You know, so they are made out of things we can't even think about. So they're just floating around and we just aren't capable of seeing those things yet because we haven't even conceptualized it. Yeah, and I bet you a lot of them know how to, if that is true, then a lot of them will probably know how to cloak their ships. <laughs> yeah, yeah, at that level, come on, come on. <laughs> what you know if cloaking what is just a consciousness shift? You know? That could be the case. That definitely right? could be the case. What I think it probably could be both. You could have, like, extra-dimensional beings who are able to clo- to move around by the power of thought. That's That's actually, that came up in the book, The Law of One. That's why I first yes. heard the concept that you, these beings did have craft, but there was actually more advanced beings that could move around by the power of thought, and they didn't even need a ship. Yeah, okay. and you can play around with that with astral projection. You know, have you ever exp- yeah. experienced that? So if you play around with that, think about thousands of years of that practice, 
how that could turn into almost materializing yourself somewhere else. Ooh, do you think people are doing that now? Oh, <laughs> at the risk of sounding insane, yes. <laughs> <laughs> You know, because I believe there are other God beings like Jesus that still exist. I just believe that Jesus was one of the few who made himself public. You know, and for making himself public, he took the ultimate sacrifice of the entire world could not handle his existence. He needed to be removed. Even nowadays, I try claiming that you're God and watch how many people try to attack. Now, imagine if you really were you know, fully connected, fully divine with, with the source. No one's going to believe you, you know, and, and it's unfortunate because at least as a, when I was a Christian myself, I believed I was like, if Jesus was here, I wouldn't kill him. No way. But the way I'm seeing the world is people reject anything that makes people seem better than them. You know, it's like, it's an ego thing. You know, it's like, oh, mm, eh, I don't you like you. You can't achieve more than me. Exactly. Exactly. So the thing is, if Jesus were to exist today, I believe it would have a very similar thing. So I, I think other God beings do still exist. They just don't make themselves public. Yeah. You know? I mm-hmm. think the same thing, dude. There's Dope. gotta be, I think it's, it's, it's gotta be, if there's, if there's beings that are capable of, doing things miraculous in the past like let's say that jesus what jesus did was actually true Mm -hmm. if that is true what would stop it from being true now or throughout the entire time period of not from the bible till now why couldn't beings do it that entire time and what's to say that they aren't and they haven't been but maybe they learned the lesson of hey i don't want to have that happen to me so I'm just gonna. I do love to tell. <laughs> I do love to tell people that Jesus never said he was the only son of God. He said we are all children of God. Hmm. Mm-hmm. The only people who said he was the only son were people. Those are all human perspectives. He's the only one that can do this. Jesus said you can all be like me. Not interesting. You know, I was studying Hermeticism, and I Ooh. was really looking into the... I did some videos on it a while ago, the Hermetic Principles, and the... Yes. Uh, I saw that on your TikTok. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and the Kabbalion, and I I want to continue to talk about that. It's very interesting because it's stark contrast to what you just said. Uh, the... Jesus saying that we are children of God, it it can't happen according to Hermeticism because God can't reproduce. Actually, in Hermeticism, it's the the way that he they would describe it would be the entire universe is a thought; it's all mental, and yeah. so the we aren't children of God unless you would call your thought a child. I guess, yeah. and that was the perspective they they used at that time. Um, I guess I use that term more for the pe- people watching who are taking those steps because I, I believe what you're saying is I do believe we are all just, we're all thought consciousness. We're all part of the same being. We're all that peace experiencing itself, you know? So, yeah. You ever, I, I the totally hermeticism thing is like you can think intelligence into existence. That's what it is essentially. Um, it's mm-hmm. like the universal, the all is what they call it. I think that's a great way to describe it. The all basically like that. thought the universe, it was a thought mm-hmm. and then the thought became the universe. And then the intelligence was delegated down into the universe was then the logos and the logos was the word and the word was the thought and the thought the word was, was God. Right. Right. Interesting, right. The intelligence yeah. of the, the God was, it was like, well, is, can that be the same thing? You know, mm. it's like, if you, th- if we can just think about the concept of thinking things into existence, like, uh, if the, at the highest level of Hermeticism, maybe there's some that we don't know about because there's always secret things. Yeah. Oh, but yeah. from what we have of it, then 
the universe is that if it if God, let's say, or the all thought the universe into existence, well then what does that make the universe? Is that is that real? Is it not real? Is it is it God? Is it not God? Because so, you know, where's that separation? It, is there a God still outside of the thought? You know, that brings up so many questions. You know? Yeah, yeah. And and it, I'm gonna I would like to go down that road really quick before I lose this thought because once once I go past it, it's gone. So um yeah. that makes me think about in the Norse belief system, Norse mythology, uh, if you look at the books, the beginning of all time started with Ymir, the first being in existence. No gender, no anything, just the first being. <laughs> they used his mind to create the universe, or its mind to create the universe, which is thought, which is very interesting. I had never, I don't think I've put that together in, in because that's true. Uh, like this is all, have you, do you, okay. Do you watch Rick and Morty? <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> do you, it's a funny, funny concept, but it's a, they did really good. Is, uh, you know, the machine that they go in to live that life. Yeah. It's all in their head. What, what if source is just projecting all of this to experience what it can create. Because because think about this, something that can experience anything would only ever want to experience itself. It's like looking at your own face. It's almost impossible. It, well, it kind of is impossible unless you're looking at a reflection, which is what we all are. We're reflections of each other. But it's like <laughs> you can only see reflections of yourself. So what you do is you put yourself into a vehicle that can maneuver through all your creation and manipulate and consciously be there. And you'd forget what you are so that you can experience every level of possibility. And hence human beings. Here we are. You know, so we are the experiencers. We are here literally, in my opinion, this is my opinion and I, I live by it, is our, our, the meaning of our life is to experience life. Is experience life. That's the whole reason we're here to experience this. Every feeling you have is an experience that is so magical that you are even able to feel it from sadness to anger, to happiness, to love. All those feelings are just things you can feel as a human being because you have this physical body. This body can do it. This brain can do it. You know, and we can be conscious of that, which makes us very unique and and i believe yeah it's just my belief system but it's worked for me is that we are all that being trying to experience itself you know yeah i feel like i explained well enough <laughs> yeah so i think that's why you see in eastern traditions this concept of a dream Maybe that that life is a dream because that would yes. kind of line up with what you're saying. It's like, yeah, if there's nothing totally to do, that. if there's nothing to do but dream, because you, it's only you. There's nothing mm -hmm. else but you, and so it's like, well, what are you gonna do? You're gonna dream mm -hmm. that you're not you. That would make give you something to do because otherwise you wouldn't have anything else to do. So the concept of the dream and the forgetting, it's like I can go into a dream and forget that I'm this body for now you could say mm -hmm. i forget about this existence on this planet and i go into a dream and it's like a whole different world well what if we're in a dream within a dream well what wait where does simulation theory fit into this then hmm well maybe yeah. a simulation kind of is a dream what if those concepts aren't too far away from each other what if a video mm -hmm. game is kind of the concept of a dream or a simulation yep. but you're you're not forgetting that's the only difference there so what yep. if you were able to go into a game and forget just like a dream? Hey, maybe that's the way that in modern day we can understand this reality, you know? Even even Elon even Elon says that's possible, you know? Like cuz it's it's true. Think about it. If like you've lucid dreamed before. Now, imagine being a thousand, two thousand, three thousand, a million years in the future and being really good at that. Like Humans have evolved 
to the point where we, our mind is where we can create anything. And you're like, man, I no longer crave anything in this reality. I am now without desire. You know, if that makes sense. And, and the thing is, you'd be like, let's just see what it would be like to have another life. Here we are. Possible. Very possible. You know, it, because, because the thing is, we already play around with it. We already play around with it. People practice lucid dreaming. People practice uh, astral projection. And the thing is, that's exactly what it is. A practice. Practicing for what? Improvement. So the thing is, if we can improve over the course of generations by practicing this, there's no limit to what we could do with our mind. Yeah, that's what I heard Greg Braden say, that this world is kind of a, uh, it's a w way to practice for something greater. Maybe there's a more mm -hmm. really interesting to think about, well, what else could there be? It's like you're training for something. Well, what could that be? Maybe, you know, that has some tangible value in the realm. Maybe the way that we experience here has some tangible value in the where we come from. And then, you know, what could that be? Maybe it's uh, just like Roy, man. I'm just living as Roy. <laughs> we are all Roy. <laughs> right. And he is grandpa. <laughs> That's it's just they nailed that concept. Yep. He's like, like, it's not a religion, it's the truth. He's like, you guys are just making this into a religion. It's like, is that not a whole thing? Like, whoa. People make religions out of the truth. You know? And the thing is it may it's it's still truth, but the religion is just the fun part we made up. You know? To make it feel like it's more fun to be in the truth. <laughs> you know? <laughs> it was just so fun. You know. Uh, I love what they do with that show with uh, with being able to entertain people who may not even believe those concepts. And I believe it could really instill the right... Because all you can do is make people think. You can't teach people anything. The thing is, you can only make them think. And, and the, that show right there really makes you sit down and you're like, that was really goofy, but whoa. <laughs> like, I... That's way more profound than I thought it would be. And then now you have these thoughts that you never had. And now you're starting your own path. It's from a silly cartoon that I believe is on purpose. I think they did this on purpose. But um, yeah, the whole concept of this being a, a dream is, is very, very possible, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. what do you, so when we think about the afterlife, uh, we mm -hmm. kind of talked about it a bit. So when we... we if we were to take the Norse paganism perspective on the afterlife, what would that be? So it's, it's very interesting. So there's Helheim, which is hell, which people associate hell with torture. But in the, in the Norse belief system, um, and Norse doesn't mean Norwegian, it's just, it's just the term. Um, Norse belief system, Helheim is a continuation of life. Kind of like just the next step. Ooh, another realm. You know, there, it might be a little different, but it's just a continuation. And then there's Valhalla, which is the, the selfish realm of Odin. So if you are a warrior in your life, he would want you to fight alongside him in the end of time. So he'll put you in this realm where you can practice being a warrior for eternity until Ragnarok comes, which is the end of the world. Um, but afterlife in Norse mythology either continues or you live a life as a warrior. It's really up to you. Um, on how you live your life. Um, the concept of Valhalla still being a realm you can enter is, is open to interpretation based off your practice in Norse paganism. Um, my personal belief is that, uh, I've, I've been speaking with a good friend of mine about this, but uh, is the karmatic debts we have based off our, our choices in past lives. You know? And it's like, I'm still diving into the thought process of this, so I'm always open to hearing what you think about it as well. But it's like we go through as much as we need to to release our karmatic debt that we paid to live as the spirit. You know? And that's why you could have these horrible lives, or you could have these great lives, or you could even meet somebody that you think is you in a past life. You know? So we're all reflections of each other. So it's like how many 
have you needed to go through until you've realized your, for lack of a better term, God self, you know, until you've realized who you really are. And then I believe once you've reached that level, then you might have a couple lives of having that level. But it's like, maybe there's an ascension after that. Like you, you go back to yourself, who you are inside. And you're like, what an incredible experience. You know? Wow. You know, it's like, ah. And you could just, it's, it could just be the next level. You know, death is, death is just part of the next level. You know, it needs to happen. You know, it's tough to be here forever, in my opinion. <laughs> you know, like as the same person, like I'd, I'd be ready for a new experience <laughs> in about a hundred years. <laughs> you, you think know? so? I think so. I think so. I, I'm an emotional person. I don't like watching people around me die, you know, and I couldn't imagine doing that with generations of my family, you know? Yeah, that would be a, a lot of change. And so it's like you would rather die or have move on than to yeah. witness the de- the moving on and transition of others. Yes. Yes. I'd rather be part of it than witness it constantly. Yeah. But then if you were alive that long, you could develop maybe abilities and you know, you could you could reach that next status and you know, you could become that extraterrestrial. And then, you know, but then You're it's like, wrong. yeah, what would happen with the earth? You know, would you affect the entire earth? And, you know, mm. it's like the whole concept of mutants. Is it good change? Is it bad change? That what these- would a public immortal being do to the world? That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Wow. Good question. I've never thought that. <laughs> I, well, that what, is what's a, your that first is take on it? I'm curious. Man, I, it's. If you can make it past your own, I, I guess if you could learn first how to navigate your emotions, um, the possibilities could be endless. I never, I never even thought of that because, man, like people, I feel like people would listen to an immortal, like a god. It's a lot of power. Yeah. Interesting. But if you you think about it, what if people have reached that level and they were thought of as gods? Maybe that's what Thor and Loki, you know, maybe it's in inner extraterrestrials, you know? (laughs) Yeah, right? It's like, oof. (laughs) I mean, that's kind of what, uh, did you see the last Black Panther movie? The Black Panther Ah, movie? I didn't. I do want to, but I haven't. No. Okay, well, that's the whole concept of the movie. Really? Uh, Kind of with Namor what they call him at the moment. Uh, but the concept of Namor, it's like the same, it's the same concept as mutants, but uh, I mean, I guess spoiler alert. Uh, so Namor, Namor, whoever you want to call it, the, mm-hmm. he, he basically, his mom takes a plant that's underwater that makes him he's like born a mutant and he has Mm -hmm. wings on his feet and he's basically like superhuman. Yeah. I've seen who that is. Yeah. So that's like, like one level and we're talking like completely immortal, but, but what we're saying is like, even what, what effect would beings that had powers, you know, it seems like, why is it that we're so obsessed with Marvel? Marvel is, in, you know, not just Marvel, but all superhero things. It's like, You're right? Is that I've always thought, man, that could be the evolution of humanity. Maybe that's something that will happen at some point. Maybe it, you know, maybe it's a very close parallel universe that has these. That's like we're kind of connected to. Maybe it's a Mandela effect. You know, yeah. I, I don't know. It's interesting. Is, it, is the about. only thing stopping us the fact that we think we can't? Oh, the power <laughs> of belief. The, or, or the power of knowing. Because you can't believe and know. So, so if mm. there could reach a time where you knew something to be true about yourself, is it possible? You know? Like, 
if that if that makes sense it's because because it's almost hard to grasp that idea of not like knowing over believing because because uh there's this really cool old guy on tiktok and every time he says it it just hits but he says it. he's like you can't know and and believe something you can't know what you believe you can't believe what you know it's like you either know it or you believe it you know it's belief means you don't know you have to believe you don't need belief if you know so if you know of your power like you create a knowledge of it like you know doesn't make it real but is knowing in itself a belief do can you think that you know something <laughs> but not actually it, it it actually isn't based in reality so therefore uh, it would be a belief i guess that comes to the point of that feeling of truth, you know, yeah. Like, what would the feeling of true knowing be like, you know? And it's the thing is, you wouldn't know until you knew, <laughs> you know. It's 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 one of those things, you know. You can't know until you know. I think a really good example of this is uh, NDEs, near death experiences, where people might have the experience of like. You can have two people that have NDEs that have complete opposite experiences, and they both say that they know that that's the truth because they experienced it. Yeah, yeah. So that's what I'm kind of thinking. It's like, well, if that is that a belief or is that knowing? You know, they directly experienced it. They feel it as truth. But what yeah. actually is the truth? You know, because some people experience Jesus. Some people experience right? like white. Some people experience it's it's completely ah uh, man. That, that leads to the whole point of maybe your belief creates what you believe you know. You know, because if they were a hardcore Christian or somebody who had a lot of resistance against Jesus or God or whatever, and that was on their mind when they were in that near-death experience, they created that because, you know, it, it spikes a bunch of DMT in the mind when you die. DMT floods the brain. So, if anything, you're having these extreme hallucinations based off where your mind is at at the time. Because, you know, set and setting, if we're going down the whole psychedelic route, when we get there, set and setting. So if you, in that set and setting, if your mind is in a particular place, when that DMT floods your mind, you're going to see what you create for yourself. And it's going to be so vivid and so real that you'll believe it's true. You know? Because I've never experienced DMT yet, but... I, I hear that you experienced an entire, almost like an entire life in like 15 minutes. So imagine flooding the brain in that, you know? Yeah, what, has been, what has been your experiences with the old plants? Have you had any or what's that yes. been like? So, so when, when it comes to that, um, I've experienced uh, mushrooms and LSD. So... I'm a I'm an active microdoser, so I, I microdose two to three times a week. Well, I use one sixth of a dose, but um, it keeps my mind open to to possibility. But um, my experience started a couple of years ago, and um, it's a big it's an active part of my life because of the fact that it cre it creates new thought processes that. My mind, because my your your mind is hot wired to think the same way every day, because you've built those neural pathways. And based off like scientific studies, I'm not the best at quoting where they come from, so I apologize. But, but based off the scientific studies that I've looked into, what what at least LSD for the for example fires off many different directions and gives you different pathways to use. So say you're trying to problem solve. Uh, and you feel like you've been stuck on the same problem for months, weeks, or a year, or whatever. And you microdose once. And then on that microdose, you, you chase that problem. And then all of a sudden, you are chasing it in a whole different way that you didn't even expect. And it almost felt natural. It almost felt like you were guided to the answer. And um, that, that's, that's the experience I have with it the most is... And obviously, I love conversating on it. You know, I like to have one other person around so that I can dive deep into, you know, thought and philosophy. And, you know, this, basically this happening right here is what I would do while I'm tripping. <laughs> so it's like, uh, 
that's my experience with it. I'm not the type of person to take it at parties. Uh, you know, I'm not the type of person to go out and be like, look at all the wiggly colors. And that's cool too. <laughs> it happens, but it's just like my experience with it is diving into the mind. Hmm. Yeah. So you think mm-hmm. it'd be, do you think it would be beneficial for everyone to do? Great question. I, I'm trying to think about the right way to word it because yes and and no. Mainly yes, because of the fact that with the right set and setting, it could definitely help with a lot of things. Um, it's helped me with depression, anxiety. It's helped me with uh, my process of overthinking. It's helped me with a lot of addictions that I had. Um, and it's just... And, and the thing is, it helps you in a way that you solve it yourself. It, so it, it sets in more instead of you feeling like you need that external help. You kind of just be like, oh, I no longer desire this. Cool. And then from then on, for some reason, you no longer decide. It's the weirdest thing. But um, also no, because there's a lot of people who aren't ready. And, and the thing is, if you live in a high anxiety, like if you are always anxious, you might elevate that until you find a way to to consciously bring that down a bit. Or if you live in a depressed state, um, like, it, it, like if you take it while you're depressed, it, it could create a more depressive state, you know? So it's like, what I would encourage people is if you do want to dive into this, which I think everybody could and should, but first make sure you're in the right mindset for you because you will be confronted with who you are. And that's not always a fun experience. <laughs> Because there's layers. It's like it shows you the layers. And it's like if you're on layer 16 and you're trying to, you know, people are like, yeah, I experienced layer one, layer oneness. It's like, (laughs) well, I have to get all the way 15 layers. And it's like people might have trips that are not exciting or fun because they're they're actually going through the layers. And it's like, do you want to take it before or after you go through the layers? Sometimes it helps (laughs) people to get through the layers. Sometimes it doesn't. It's very polarizing. That's from my research and I've talked to people about this, it's the same, a lot of times the same thing where it's like, it's, it's something that it could be beneficial and it could not be. I think it's very dependent upon the person, but I think overall, if you're open to it, I think that's maybe a signal that, Hey, maybe we could explore it, you know, for educational purposes mm-hmm. only, we're just thinking about these yes, things, yes. you know, um, just speaking out loud about thoughts. That's all. right. So yeah. that's interesting. Now, have you ever had experiences with them outdoors then? I'm curious. Oh, yes. Okay, I mean, so the colors, though. Right? You're talking I'm about gonna, colors. <laughs> I'll talk about my favorite experience really quick, man. The colors, for sure. But um, are you familiar with the Sequoia Forest in California? It, is that by Yosemite or no? I've only been to Yosemite. No. That's the only No, place. it's not near Yosemite. It's... It's in a different realm, but there's this place called the Sequoia Forest. It has with the, one of the oldest trees in the world in it, and one of the biggest trees in the world. And um, I went out there and we camped uh, at the beginning of my van life journey that I did last year. Um, but we tripped out there. We did well, experientially, experientially, uh, it was a little bit more than a regular. And we just walked around, rocked around the woods for a while, and. I'm going to tell you, man, that was a crazy experience. Trees, there's so much life in the tree. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's, it's okay to be a tree hugger because sometimes in those moments, you're like, this tree has so much history. <laughs> I don't know if you know what I mean by that, but it's like, woo. It's just because <laughs> we walked up to the oldest tree and it's older than it, it was. This tree is 100 years older than Jesus. And just being around it almost felt like it has seen so much life happen in front of it. I was like, whew. You know, it almost makes you emotional to the point where it's like, wow, like you've made it so far, you know? And the un, unequal amount of, uh, the unmatched, that's the right word, matched amount of gratitude and love for everything in those experiences, especially in the woods. And again, if, Anybody, again, for educational purposes, 
if it's ever happening in the woods, please make sure somebody knows where you are. Uh, the trees will eat you. Uh, not eat you as in like, ang, 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 but like you'll be in the woods and you can make a turn and it all looks the same. It's all doing its own thing. And now you're like, where am I? Um, which way did I come from? Very easy to get disoriented. So please be safe for educational purposes. If ever get to that point. Yeah. <laughs> if, um, if you're wondering how you can do that, here's a tip for you. Um, on the new iPhone, the iPhone 14, I think, they have an SOS satellite feature. Um, so really? if, if you uh, get lost and you have an iPhone 14, you can connect to the satellite and you can just get a get a text or I think it's a call too. I know for sure it's a text, but I think it's also a call. Um, you can get a satellite call. So wow. if you are thinking about doing these things, think about getting yourself an <laughs> iPhone 14. It's just the new ones that have that feature, but it was a really cool feature with the new phone. Um, yep. I got the new phone to do a second camera during the podcast in person, and it's been great. Smart. I would also recommend anyone... If you're on a budget or if you're just looking for a good second camera, the cinematic mode on these things are fantastic. Um, what highly recommend. Yes. If you want to see the cinematic mode of the of this, I, don't, I haven't talked about this on the podcast yet, but go to the last podcast because the one before this is going to be in person and look at my, the camera on me. That's actually an iPhone. It's fucking wild because Dude, it, it is so good technology is getting, you know. So, um, yeah. Really Any content creator out there needs it. Uh, I I think so. If if you're a content creator full time, you need at least the iPhone 13 Pro Max and up. Yeah, like oh, it's mm -hmm. undeniably different. So yeah, I switched my earlier videos were on S20, and I'm like, you know, I might go iPhone gang for the first <laughs> time ever, and I did it, yeah. and I always recommend it. It's yeah. there's something about that front camera is so it's also really good. It's good for short form content. Just yes. Overall, yeah, 100%. A good front camera is hard to beat. It's really hard to beat. It is 100%. <laughs> and I haven't found a single Android that has beaten it and for as far as I know, they've got the best front. 100%. I mean, you could you could technically like turn it around and uh you know, do the back camera, but that shit's hard yeah, and it's annoying that's... and it makes it I think a lot of times people don't think about this, but when you're making content, the more you can streamline the process, the the more you'll want to create. You know? Yes. Thank you for saying that out loud. Yes. It's so true. People forget that. They're like, oh, it needs to be super complicated. No. You want to make it a process, a very easy to do process for you. And that will help you move into the world of becoming content creator. Yep. You know, that's that's the biggest struggle, you know. Yep, like for me, I have this. This is a Sony six sixty four hundred, and it's really nice. But having the for the skits that I've been doing, I've been doing more skits recently, and Love having it. the the workflow of airdropping from the iPhone. I bought myself a Mac just so I could airdrop and work with the iPhone because you know how iPhones. <laughs> it's so hard to get footage to a PC. It's Dude, ridiculous. It's so hard, and so yes. I almost was forced. After I got the iPhone <laughs> to buy the, the, I just bought like the cheap MacBook Air, the 2020 or some a couple years old. Yeah. I don't usually buy things like brand new. I'm like, you know, a couple years, it's usually pretty good. It's just like, you can say, right. And um, I try to make the resources work as much as I can. Uh, but with the, with the workflow of just straight going from the iPhone to MacBook AirDrop, you can review it. It's super easy. Oh, man, it makes me want to create much more because for a while there was like quality, quality, quality. But then I'm like, ah, dude, it's not all about quality. It's like mm -hmm. of the text. It's, it's not quality. It's quality of the it's quality of the video, too. Like, what are you saying? And sometimes yes. I don't know about you, but I can get frustrated with all the bullshit of making a video to the point where I'm not creative anymore. It's like I'm now I'm just annoyed as hell and I don't even want to make the video anymore. A hundred percent. One hundred percent. How long if know. you don't mind me asking, I am curious, how long have you been a content creator? I've well, I mean in twenty fifteen I started my first YouTube channel about fitness. So technically Me too. <laughs> that's where I started. And then I then I live streamed video games for a year. And did video game stuff for a while. And I've been playing video games since I was like 13. 
uh, like long, long time. And then yeah. on top of that, then I stopped doing that. I think it was in, oh, probably like three years. I started to do Instagram, but it wasn't until, I, well, I started on YouTube technically, but then I realized I wasn't getting sh- Nothing was happening. And I was Hard. posting a lot of videos and there wasn't really that much of a, you know, it wasn't getting promoted. And I was probably kind of trash at videos at the beginning, like most people. So it's fine. I get it. Mm-hmm. Then I switched to Instagram and I, then I was like, oh, I got a thousand followers in the first year on Instagram and YouTube. And I'm like, all right, TikTok seems to be the thing. Let me oh, get dude. on there, even though I didn't want to, because it seemed like it was for kids. And I had a, a mentor that was Dang. like, uh, yep. Ash of Matt and Ash. And she was like, yeah, you need to get on here. And I'm like, wait, you guys are making how much money doing this? And not only about the money, but you're reaching so many people. Holy mm-hmm. crap. It was because they they had their book and they were just doing their book on top of like, and that is a perfect strategy for TikTok in terms of strategy because people don't have to know you directly to buy your book. But it, if you... If they just maybe if they see a video and they see the video with you and they're like, oh, you've got a book. Okay, great. I'll buy it. But rapport, rapport. Right. But if somebody wants to buy a course, a lot of times, you know, they have to know you a little bit more. Yeah. So I think that that would that the 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 strategy of like, well, Instagram's not working. This is what like it was this is what it was for me. Instagram's not working, YouTube's really not working. I know my content is getting good. Let's just try and reach it. And then in the first month, I got a hundred thousand, just like immediately. And then I actually was like, I started to realize that TikTok seemed to be its own kind of biosphere, and it it was like you could get completely TikTok millions, and people have no idea who you are for the most part anywhere else. Yes, yes. And so then I started to move, and I was like, pretty early on, I would say. Within the first two months, I was like, I just want to get people over to Instagram and YouTube. So then I kind of just started to use that as a kind of springboard, and it and it worked. At that point, at that time period, people were just following me on Instagram, and they were coming over. And then, you know, I guess we're doing a whole epilogue on social media now. But uh, I noticed that the Instagram algorithms started to change a lot of people didn't like that because they were like oh we want photos but it was perfect for me as a video creator perfect. because yes it worked and i was like okay i'm just gonna go all in on instagram and then i did that and then i was like i really love the podcast i'm just gonna continually do this and i'm gonna put a ton of resources in that and and then here we are here you are nice That's what about awesome. you Man, how did that go, how did that journey go for you? It it let's see. So I was like 13, okay, and I I just I saw somebody with a bunch of followers on Instagram. I was like, oh my gosh, I want that. You know, literally it was that simple. I mean, I was a kid at the time. It was about followers. And when it's about followers, that doesn't work. <laughs> um, so I, I I went after Instagram. Uh, I did bodybuilding for a while. So my original name was Savior of Aesthetics. Um, and I had a brand and I was like 15, 16, chasing this fitness dream. I competed at 18 in my first bodybuilding competition. And uh, I posted all this on YouTube. I was a daily vlogger. I even vlogged with Logan Paul twice wow. um, while he was in his penthouse in Hollywood. You know, So he was popping off um, and nothing caught on. Nothing. <laughs> and again, keep this in mind, everybody who's listening, I was chasing followers. All right. I wanted it, that's what that's what it was. And looking <laughs> back at it, again, that's not the way to do it. Um eventually I kind of just like was like, ah, oh, this sucks. You know, I'm gonna step back from this. And I tried fitness again for a while, but without pursuing it. Uh, um I was in sales for a while, so I pursued sales career while keeping that on the back end. And honestly, it sat very still until TikTok came around. And um, believe it or not. Same as you. I thought it was for kids. I was like, there's much children on this. Side. This is a joke. Like, why would I ever be on TikTok? And then uh, me and my girlfriend started a fitness page. And she started blowing up, you know? And I was like, what's going on? She's getting tens of thousands of followers. And I have like 200. 
what what is this so i do have a failed tiktok out there if anybody finds it um so i deleted that i was like you know what forget it. tiktok doesn't work i tried you know i pulled that whole thing and then um funny enough i i discovered the the, the psychedelic world and it opened up my mind i read the book the untethered soul by michael a singer uh opened up my mind um and it was no longer about wanting followers it was now about wow i i feel like i need to make a bigger impact and, and the thing is by default followers will come with that but i need to start creating content that will make people strong you know empowered i want people to feel good when they see my content and so i decided to uh make another tiktok and i started growing a beard at the time and Admittedly, I watched the show Vikings once and I was like, mm, <laughs> this is cool. So I'm going to be the TikTok Viking. And at right. that time, when I started, I was the first Viking on TikTok, you know, um, and I started growing very quickly. First three months, I had 120K. Six months, I had 250K. A year, it went up to 350. And I was like, whoa, whoa. And it was the first time I ever wore plaid. Now I wear it all the time. I hated plaid. But <laughs> it, it happened so fast that I was like, all right, well, that was the trick. You know, it, TikTok is the place to build the platform. And then from there, I had the same problem you had is, is I had all these followers on TikTok. And I was like, wow, this is crazy. But nothing's happening. <laughs> you know, it's like I have 350,000 people and no substance. So I started creating my Instagram and started developing that. And I had a YouTube channel where I post every once in a while. Uh, but my main focus was building community. So I moved my community to Discord. And I created a community of people where, you know, House of Kinger, we talked about that earlier, where people can come together and meet other people who are interested in pagan belief systems. And I call it the Pagan Hub, House of Kinger, you know. And uh, it's run by a team of like 15 people. Shout out to Elder Death, Kim, if she's watching. <laughs> she's wonderful. Um, but it's just, that's how it all kind of started, you know? And here we are now where Instagram's starting to like really take off. They changed their algorithm and it's working incredibly well. But uh, it, the, the secret for me that really switched it was that I stop chasing followers and start creating impact, you know, start providing. So instead of consuming, start producing. You know, and a lot of us are very heavy consumers. We are overweight in our mind with how much content we consume. So start being the producer of content instead of the consumer. And, you know, you can still go out and watch it and stuff, but producing it more and more is really what found what, what created that flow for me. And it took me about a year to go full time on, uh, on like, as a content creator, it took about a year. And then I lived in a van and traveled in a van and do content like that for a while. Man, but, there's so yeah, much that I want to, I want to get into from that. I feel like first off, Definitely. you said something important. It's like you're creating more than you're consuming. And I feel like if the more people hear that, I think the better, because I think a lot of people will not even be able to hear their own thoughts. Because they're mm -hmm. so caught up in what everybody else thinks that you don't even mm -hmm. know what you think anymore. Yeah. You well know? Said. And so learning to understand that everybody is going to have an opinion about everything and they're all going to think differently a lot of the times. There's going to be a, someone who dislikes what you do no matter what. No matter so, what. So you might as well do something that you enjoy or that you think is worth it. Like 100%. Like, I found that for live streaming video games, I still love video games, but it wasn't something that was fulfilling for me in the long run, which is why I stopped doing it. Because I realized, mm -hmm. hey, we've got the rest of my life. And what's something that I want to do that I think will really help the world? Because what's the point of living? This is my th thought process back then. What's the point of living yeah. life if it's not going to be something that in the end will have some sort of impact. I don't care if people know me and I still don't care if people know mm -hmm. who I am. Really what I care yeah. about is that in some way 
is going to like you said you can't you can't teach people you can make them think or mm-hmm. i think that you can encourage mm-hmm. them or give them the opportunity to think yes. about something and so yes. i realized well what are people thinking about when i'm playing games you know maybe they're being entertained and i think that might have a value but in the end i started to get more interested in other things and like the things we're talking about now and i felt yeah. like this would provide way more value to people in terms of and it would also be fulfilling for me, yeah. and that, that's kind of where I transitioned from, you know, the fitness into, the, I thought that I wanted to help people with fitness, but then I realized, well, it's the mind. And then I just was kind of like rejecting the uh, the hero's journey. I was like, you know what? I'm done. I just want to entertain <laughs> yep. people and make money. And that's when I was playing video games and it was, <laughs> it was fun, but it, you know, it becomes a, when, when you play video games for 15 hours a day, it then becomes yeah. something that is no longer fun and it becomes something tedious. So, and I understand why a lot of people who are streaming video games, they do react content. Cause it's like, you can only play the same game so many times. I mean, some people will play it forever and mm-hmm. there are those types of people. But for me, I was like, I can't yep. do this forever. And so then I moved on and, Oh, there was another thing. Oh, the van life. I yeah. also lived in a rooftop tent for 10 months no, uh, with my nice. girlfriend, and we traveled around the U.S., so I know what that's like. Dude, it's so cool to meet somebody else who's done that. That is awesome. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the whole living outdoors and, you know, digging a hole to take a shit. <laughs> I've dug so many holes. And, See, um, we bought a van with a bathroom in it. <laughs> big brain. Big brain. Yes. <laughs> you know, we actually had a cassette toilet at the beginning, but it mm. was just so nasty to to dump that we just dumped it once and we said, we're never fucking never. doing this again. <laughs> we will dig holes because it's a better experience because we were way out there. Like we were dispersed camping. Um, yeah. And and so that we just started, you know, doing it that way. And, you know, I you had the luxury of walls, which I did not have the luxury of. Yeah. Yeah, um, we did. But what was the experience like for you in terms of when you stopped? I'm curious about, you know, you enjoyed it, I'm sure. But oh, love it. Yeah. moving on and kind of like, what was that transition like for you? Man, so it was very abrupt. Okay. So we were planning to do the van life for about two years. Um, but we only did it for one. What had happened is our, our catalytic converter caught fire and lit our wood floors that we put in in flames oh, and uh our van lit up on fire we were on the side of the road for about seven almost eight hours with trucks flying by us inches away from hitting us and me and her so my my girlfriend comes from a little bit of a like a like a middle middle class background so she she kind of has a bit more of a higher standard of living than i did like dude i can live in a bed in the back of a truck she's like i need a bathroom and a sink i'm like okay cool no problem like we that's why we got that van that we did but that fire, we were like, okay, we weren't prepared for this. Financially, our businesses aren't in the position to handle these types of consequences yet. So we were like, all right, what we need to do is park the van. We, we moved to Texas. I think we broke down in Kentucky. <laughs> uh, we, we stripped the catalytic converter, put a pipe in, you know, which we were in a state that was legal. And... Um, <laughs> Mm-hmm. We we came to Texas and we got a house out here. And the transition from a van to a house. So let me tell you, the van, I couldn't stand straight to pee. Okay? okay. In a house, we, we I'm six foot three. <laughs> I'm, I'm six four, so I'm Oh, you know. Right you know. You. Yeah. I couldn't like my shoulders, I had to tilt them, you know, it was just <laughs> Yeah. And and the bed was less than a full size. It was very small. I almost had to sleep with my legs curled a little bit every night for about a year. And <laughs> moving to this house, like we, we don't live in a luxurious house. You know, it's, it's, an, it's a nice place. We have a yard and stuff now. We have a car, but just being able to stand up in the bathroom, <laughs> you know, it feels like luxury. Being able to wake up on our bed, like a bed is a luxury to be able to have AC. Oh, luxury you know so it's like honestly the transition from van life to 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 living the life i live now has really helped me see gratitude in all the small things 
you know, and it's, and she even said that too, it's really changed her perspective on life because she's always had everything she wanted, you know, it, as she grew up, you know, it's, she never went without. I grew up in and out of foster care, so we've had different bring-ups. But even she said um, she just experiences life differently now after having almost nothing in a van. It's you know, and, and it's very humbling, but also freeing because we discovered minimal, minimalism, you know, which, which is very freeing, mind-freeing. We feel very comfortable not having a lot of things. <laughs> but before, we loved having as much as we could. Oh, a thing we want. Let's get it. You know, now it's like, oh, what's the intention behind this thing? Do we really need that? Like, <laughs> you know? And uh, that transition was amazing. So we're definitely going to do it again. But uh, next time we do it, we're going to do it a bit more intentionally. Before last time we did it, we just sold everything in our apartment and left. You know, it was kind of like, we have no idea what we're in for. Let's do it. And there was so much we had to go overcome. But, uh, there are stories that I really am very happy that we have. And I recorded a lot of it on my YouTube channel too. Nice. What's the name of your YouTube channel? So people can find uh, it. Bearded Viking 7 on YouTube. Okay. It's because I have a beard and I look like a Viking. And I like <laughs> the number 7. <laughs> Imagine that. <laughs> right, so, right? Weird, huh? <laughs> yeah, I'll put that in the description. So if you want to go Appreciate watch that, or I'll put a card uh, during this part if people want to go watch that right now. Um, but I feel like the the van life experience is something that I was not expecting. I was actually trying to get an RV, um, ah. and I had to abruptly leave because of the uh, environment I was in. Was like, it's like, bro, we gotta, we gotta bounce. Yeah, like, here. yeah. And <laughs> sometimes that happens in life. And so yep. we just. We left Michigan and we didn't even know what we were going to do. We didn't have the plan to get a tent. We were still trying to finance an RV and didn't end up working out. And we're like, okay, we've got a Mazda. I guess let's see if we can put a roof or get a tent on this bitch because we ain't got no other options. <laughs> you know. So that's what we ended up doing. Um, and we had to abruptly stop too because we ran out of money. Yeah, <laughs> you know oh, what I mean. That's the hardest part. Oof. Yeah, and I mean, I was like. You know what? If this, if that, if we run out of money, then let's. We're not going to starve out here. I'm going to, you know, find someone that I think would be good to live with. My dad was like, "Hey, just come on down." You know, he had an extra room, and uh, we both lived in a in one room, a real small room in his apartment, and we went absolutely hard for nice. Um, I think it was a little bit less than a year, like like eleven months, and that's when I wrote my book. That's when I did. All the challenges, that's when I... So, for anyone who's like, man, I'm not living where I want to live, it's like, oh, I did that. Like, <laughs> I get it. <laughs> it's possible. Like, even though it seems like it sucks, because you, you like sometimes you don't want people to hear you because it's your, maybe it's your family, your friends, or, you know, and it's just like, I've been in those situations where you feel like you can't really express yourself because you've got people around that are... Uh, so, it's possible. If you got to go into your car, get your ass into your car. You got to go to the park, film some videos, do that shit. Like there There's are no ways shame. around it. Right. Don't, don't, don't shame yourself for it. It's the flow of life. You know, it's, it's crazy, it's part of it. but it's part of it. Yeah. It's part of it. Yeah. And yeah. I respect people that went through that. Not necessarily, I don't know if more, but it's like when people tell me they've been through things like you went through and it's like, there's a level of relatability of like, Oh, you didn't just get everything handed to you, which, you know, yeah, I think that is, a lot of people that sh see that as a detriment, they're like, man, I wish I had that trust fund money because a lot of people in the spiritual community got that money that they just were given and then they can just do whatever the hell and they haven't went through the struggle and you can tell in their, the way that they are. You know what yep. I'm saying? It's like yep. you can tell there's a little bit of narcissism in there. There's a little bit of because they didn't get humbled. And it's like, yep. I kind of know when people go through these experiences where they've had non-optimal living situations or if they, you know decided to do these things that a lot of people didn't do whether it's a van or if it's living uh, nomadically or there's yep. millions of other things like working jobs i've been a waiter i've been a dishwasher you know i've i've done all these other things and it's like bro that is character development that really i don't know if i would go back and change it you know yeah, it's 100 percent. it's 100%. like i don't know people think it, like when i was in the moment it's like i don't want to do it but it's like yeah bro kind of needed that to learn you know yeah, yeah. You're just so happy with who you've developed into, you know? 
And that leads to a, another amazing thing. So relating that to the Viking way of life is in the Havamal, which is technically the wise words of Odin. Um, Odin says, um, um, and again, this is not quote like word for word, but this is what it means. And it's uh, wise is the man who has experienced uh, travel for he knows the true intention of men. You know, it's like by traveling, you have seen what the world's really like. You have seen what people are like, intentions of people. You've seen different cultures. You've seen different worlds. You've seen how different things are run. Like, just because of your spot, like, even if you travel 20 miles away, 30, 50, 100, that's still your community. That's still your place. Like, it might be a little different there, but oh, when you just travel different places consistently, you really see that the world is different everywhere. People are different everywhere and you learn so much like so much you know th that's one of my favorite things that i got from that is just like the experience of it all you know my next step is at, uh overseas i want to travel the world now instead of just the US. same <laughs> dude yeah. oh my god i've said that on so many podcasts it's like yeah we're getting there i'm i am ready i am it's so happening. ready I am lucky enough to, I've never been to Hawaii, but I had some friends who asked me to house it for two months. So no, starting nice. at the end of January to like March, I'm going to be in Hawaii. So we're going to get that experience traveling. I've never been outside the United States. I've never even went to Hawaii or an island. So I'm going to yeah. get a little bit of traveling. And then after that, I also want to, I want to take the podcast worldwide. <laughs> so we go. can get, you know what I mean? I love it. I love it, man. That's the way to go. That's totally, and you give off that energy very well. I think that's totally the path you're going. So definitely Good. keep, Good, keep that I mean, thought because that's moving. I'm ready. And I'm like, you know what? <laughs> I'm also not like impatient. I've realized that, you know, the time will come and I don't want to yeah. live my life being like future tripping. Like, oh, it'll be great. My life will be good when I'm doing this because I've done that a lot too. It's like, oh, yeah. You know, once I have this thing, I'll feel better. Or once I can travel the world and, you make these type of videos or whatever it might be. It's always unattainable things in that moment. Yep. And it's You're always like, reaching, always reaching. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's, that brings presence into the picture, you know, is everybody's living so much in the future or the past that like, we tend to forget how wonderful this moment is, you know, cause this is, this is always that, that exists. The past is, is thoughts we're holding on to and the future is things we're making up, you know? So it's like, Right here, right now is the truth. It's it's your reality right now. And what we think the future is, is our creation. And what the past is, is what we're holding on. So, you know, and that's that's exactly what you're saying. You're like, oh, I'm trying not to like future reach. You know, I don't want to live in the future because that's not being here. Right. Because life can be pretty good right now. It can be. It's not always uh, something that is enjoyable. Um when you're dealing with like extreme circumstances, because I know that's always yeah. what comes up with when I talk yeah. about these things. But what I'm saying mm -hmm. is that perception of this yes. moment is extremely important. And in, in all my years, I'm not that old, but I'm not that young like in the <laughs> yeah. middle. It's like, <laughs> that's one of the biggest things um, that is continually come up in my life. It's like, mm -hmm. I can enjoy this moment in some way. And even yes. if, you know, yes. I don't know about you, but one of the biggest things that have come up for me is like, I can enjoy life in some way, yes, but it's also, if I don't have this thing that I'm working towards yet, there has to be in my life at least some level of like, can I put in the effort and then be okay with where I am? And it's like the effort is enough. There, there's some level of like, yeah, I, I know there's going to be people out there that are like, Hey, you, your being is enough. You're, you just being here. And there is that part of it. But I also think for me, <laughs> I'm at this point where it's like, I am doing everything that I can to reach this, uh, place eventually. And I'm not worried about when it happens, but it's like in the, in the sometimes struggle, you know, the struggle of, oh, I'm, I got to get in the cold plunge. Shit. Yeah. You yeah. know, oh, or I've got to do this, I've got to do this workout. Shit. And yep. I don't really feel like it. Yep. In that, I can generate a level of peace because I have decided to meditate or I've decided to do these things. It's like there is this subtle nuance of I can enjoy these things 
afterward, even though I might not enjoy it because I did it, it's like this long-term, short-term gratification. It's a, kind of a different way of saying that in a sense, you know? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So. Yeah. And it, it kind of comes from the, uh, the idea of like when people, a majority of people I run into when I say, uh, I, I meditate or I manifest my goals. It's like, Oh, then where's the action? So you just sit there and wait for things to happen. And it's like, putting in those efforts of meditation or like mindfulness or, you know, those personal practices help guide you to the how, you know, you by default start rolling into those, those, uh, those actions that are necessary. You know, people are so focused on, all right, I got to do this thing to get the satisfaction. It's like, okay, cool. Meditate on that. I'm not just going to sit around and like wait for it to happen. It's like, no, no, no. I'm not saying sit around and wait. I'm saying if you can do that m- more mindfully, more intentionally, that's the right word, intentionally, you are now finding much more gratification or for lack. Is that the right gratification? Oh, yeah. Gra- yeah. Gratification in that thing you're doing. You know, you are now m- consciously moving towards your goal instead of just doing an action because you think it's the right way to go. You know, and, and a lot of people are just doing what they think works. And it's like, have you ever read the Surrender Experiment by Michael A. Singer? I've heard of it. I haven't read it. Oh, I'm in the middle of reading it right now. It's an insane. So um, the whole idea behind it is that life unravels itself around you, regardless if you do something about it or not. You're going to be presented with opportunities. You're going to be presented with these things. You just need to be there. Many people are worried about the future. They're holding on to the past. They're being a victim, usually holding on to the past, you know, or they're stressed about the future to the point where they're not here. They're not present. You're not existing in this moment. So you're letting these opportunities fly right past you. You know, all you had to do was instead of sitting there and stressing about the future, you might have had to just listen to that person talk. And then you're like, oh, hey, I actually am a part of that too. Really? Oh, no way. Yeah. What do you do? Oh, I'm a CEO of this. Wait, what? Yeah. And then life just starts unraveling itself in front of you. Like things that don't make sense to you happen. You're like, what a freaking coincidence. (laughs) Weird. You know, have you ever walked by a restaurant and in your head, you're like, man, I am just craving food, but I don't have the money right now. And then all of a sudden, like something comes up to where you're able to get a meal for free. I don't know if you've ever had that happen, but that manifests itself into my life constantly. And I'm just like, weird. You know, I just accepted the fact that I'm hungry. I wasn't mad about it. I'm not angry. I'm not stressed. I'm not pissed. I'm just accepting. Hmm, I'm kind of hungry. It'd be nice to have a meal right now. I don't have the money currently with me, but I could eat. Most of the time, life just presents it to you. And if the opportunity is there and you like it, take it. Or in the surrender experiment, what he does is when, it, when opportunities are presented to him and his mind says no, he realizes that's ego, his thoughts. His thoughts are trying to defend his victim mentality. So instead of accepting what his thoughts are saying, he'll accept the opportunity because life presented it. You know, and it l- leads him to making hundreds of millions of dollars. And all he wants is to sit alone and meditate. And he's, he makes hundreds of millions of dollars with three or four or five different businesses that just unfold themselves in front of him because he surrenders to life. You know, it's, yeah, you are, dude, it's, I'm sitting there. I'm like, wow, wow. (laughs) You know, and and you'll see it unfold in your life as you start kind of adapting the process for yourself. Like things just, you're like, huh, I never realized I had that thought about this thing. I'm going to ignore that thought and do this. And it it explains it better in the book. But it's like when you do that, literally life unfolds itself in front of you in the weirdest way. And I'm like, all right, cool. You know, I was stressed about, just for example, I was stressed about money the other day. And there was this one thing I was holding on to because my friend had like told me, you know, me and him have a lot of talks like this. And he told me, he's like, hey, you're punishing yourself for no reason. You should just do that. And I'm like, ah. And then my head was like, no, punish it. Like, you shouldn't. Da, 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 da. 
And then I was like, mm, there's a reason he told me this. And I did it. And it solved my problem. I was like, what? <laughs> like, that was so strange. But it was immediate. Like, immediate. And th- those are the types of results you almost can't deny. You know? So. Wow. Yeah. I get passionate about this stuff. I love this because I only like to talk about what I've seen work uh, because I, or something that I'm currently practicing, you know, or I've looked into. And if I haven't, I, I like to admit it. Like, hey, honestly, I haven't thought about it. Or I, I, honestly, I'm not educated in that field. You know, I'll tell people those things. But when I talk about this, it's because I usually practice it, you know. And I bet that's what a lot of people like about you, man, is that you're you have the ability to understand, hey, there's stuff I don't know instead of trying to like make it up. And then people that. can people can like say, Yeah, that's both because <laughs> you know, there's enough <laughs> there's enough people a lot of times, you know, yeah. that are like able to think, you know, they have some knowledge and and so I really appreciate when someone can say, I don't know, you know, like uh I also mm-hmm. started the podcast. I was like I don't know a lot about paganism. <laughs> like yeah, I don't no know what's going on here. <laughs> right. But I know that I was interested in learning about it. And you know, I'm yeah. I'm just so happy that I got to have you come on, man, and uh talk about so many different things. I don't know what the hell I we're gonna name too. this podcast. <laughs> yeah, right. It's, it's just <laughs> I love it. I, I think those yeah. episodes are the best because it's it's not uh so this is what it is and it's kinda in this box. So I, I appreciate you coming on, man. I appreciate the invite, man. I, when I came across your uh, your content, I very much resonated with your messages. So I was like, when you invited me, I was like, this is perfect. <laughs> like, this is awesome. Yeah, I so. think it was great. Fantastic. And um, I've got two more questions for you then. Oh, go right ahead. <laughs> so first question would be, have you noticed any aspects of this reality might be a game? And if so... What have you noticed? Hmm. So let's see. Yes, I do think this reality is is a game. Kind of the same way that when you're playing a video game and you realize there's a button you weren't using that makes things so much easier. Um, so explore your controller and find the buttons you haven't pressed. Because a lot of the times there's a cheat code in there you didn't know you had. And that's how the universe feels like a game. You can almost walk into a situation and be like, what aspect of me complements this situation? And if you realize you can bring that self, that self into that environment, a lot of the times you can watch the environment unfold in almost a predictable way. You know? And if you're faced with adversity and problems and constant bombardment of like, hard things for lack of a better word realize that that means the game is progressing have you ever walked backwards in a video game all the enemies are gone there's no challenges but when you're moving forward all the enemies and challenges are ahead of you realize that's progression of the game and that's that's definitely how i could see this reality being fantastic man and Thank so you. Then the final question I have for you is, let's say that the old ancestors were, you know, watching, like you said, they were pleased and they said, you know what? All right, man, I think you've done enough. Uh, we're going to take you. Uh, we're going to take you to the future. And um, that's going to be it. OK, you can't come back. And uh, you're actually from the future. Oh, shit. You just learned that out of nowhere. So Whoa. if that was to happen and you had one last chance to talk to humanity, you realize, oh shit, the Universe Game Podcast is the last time I get to say anything to anyone. What do you think you would want to leave humanity with? I mean, it could be a sentence, it could be a quote, it could be a, uh, a thesis, it could be a whole paragraph, it could be a page. What is something, if you knew you're going to talk to humanity for the last time, you would say to those listening? Wow. Wow, what a question. Hold on. Just give me a moment to, to digest sure, You can that. take as much time as you want because I know it's like, oh, shit. It's one of those it's, moments. It's definitely one of those moments, but I love it. Such a good question. Um, hmm. 
there's there's one one quote I can't and again I'm the worst at quoting people, so I apologize. There's this one there's this one quote that always comes up in my head. And it just left. One moment. That's okay, <laughs> man. I mean, you, you can do whatever, I'm gonna whatever say you want. Here we are. All right. So there's this one thing that I'm sure a lot of people have heard, but it really, really resonates. Is that all of us are self-made, but only the successful will admit it. So I, I want people to remember that. We all, are, as much as it might hurt to hear, is we have all done this to ourselves. Wherever you are, <laughs> whether you're super successful, whether you're in the, in, the, in the pits, it's like realize that, and again, you, most of our victim mentalities are going to tell us, no, 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 I didn't do this. They did. And hey, we all have that thought. Don't worry. Realize first that changing yourself is truthfully the key. You can't force people to change. But you know who you can change without a doubt? It's you. So that's that's where I would leave it right there. For sure. There it is, man. All right. Yep. Where can people find you? Oh, uh, man. You can find me on TikTok at Bearded Viking 7, Instagram at The Bearded Viking, and you can find me on YouTube at Bearded Viking 7. Uh, and I would love to see you guys there. Seriously. All right, fantastic. I'll have all the links in the description again for all your stuff, all the stuff you're doing. And um, yeah, check it out. Check out what he's got going on. I know you've got a lot of stuff. So if you've got a link tree or something like that, or however you share your links, we'll also put that. Link in my bio. (laughs) Hey, that'll work. All right. Well, thanks again for coming on, man. It was was fantastic. Thank you, Nick. It was an incredible conversation. And uh, man, I I would definitely be listening to this over and over in my head until it's released. I'll probably watch it too. <laughs> Such a good thing. Hey, let's go, man. <laughs> let's go. Love let's go. Watch your, watch your game. own podcast. <laughs> I mean, I got, I watch them, but I watch all the podcasts back to watch clips and to get clips. So it. I'm right there with you. So, all right, university game. Thanks for all watching, listening, everyone. We'll see you in the next episode. And until then, peace. If you enjoyed today's podcast, don't forget to leave a review. If you're on Apple podcasts or Spotify, And if you're on YouTube, consider subscribing for more episodes just like this here on University Game. And also, don't forget to check out the sponsor of today's podcast, 10 Secrets of Awakening, my book, with over 200 five-star reviews on Amazon. And if you just want to listen to more podcasts, hey, we've got plenty right here. Check out the University Game playlist, and I will see you on the next podcast. And until then, peace.